Cantos seven to nine of Book Four of the Ramayana of Balmiki, translated by Ralph D. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by O One Two Three. Canto seven, Rama consoled. With longing love and woe oppressed, the banner chief he does addressed, and he, while solves his ardor and spoke raised up his reverent hands and spoke o ragusan i cannot tell where now that cruel fiend may dwell declare his power and might or trace the author of his cause to raise still trust the promise that i make and let thy breast no longer ache so will i toil nor toil in vain that thou thy concert mayst regain so will i walk with might and skill that joy anew thy heart shall feel the valour of my soul display and raven and his legions slay awake awake unmanned no more recall the strength twas thine of yore beseems not man like thee to wear a weak heart yielding to despair like troubles too mine eyes have seen lamenting for a long-lost queen but by despair unconquered yet my strength of mind i never forget far more shouldst thou of lofty soul thy passion and thy tears control when i of banner's humbler strain weep not for her in ceaseless pain be firm be patient nor forget the bounds the brave of heart have set in loss in war in strife in fear when the dark hour of death is near up with thine own brave heart advise not does despond the farm and wise but he who gives his childish heart to choose the coward's weakling part sinks like a foundered vessel deep in waves of war that over him sweep see suppliant hand to hand i lay and moved by faithful love i pray give way no more to grief and gloom but all thy native strength resume no joy on art i win have they who yield their souls to sorrow's sway their glory fades in slow decline it is not for thee to grieve and pine i do but hint with friendly speech the wiser part i dare not teach this better pat dear friend pursue and let not grief thy soul subdue sugriva does with gentle art and sweet words suited the mourner's heart who brushed off with his mantle's hem tears from the eyes bedewed with them sugriva's words were not in vain and rama was himself again around the king his arms he trio and thus began his speech anew whatever a friend most wise and true who counsels for the best should do whatever his gentle part should be has been performed dear friend by thee taught by thy counsel o oh my lord i feel my native strength restored a friend like thee is hard to gain most rare in time of grief and pain now strain thine utmost power to trace the mighty lady's dwelling place and aid me in my search to find fierce raven of the impious mind trust thou in turn thy loyal friend and say what aid this arm can lend to speed thy hopes as fostering rain quickens in art the scattered grain deem not those words that seem to spring from pride are false o banner king none from these lips has ever heard none ever shall hear one lying word again i promise and declare yea by my truth dear friend i swear then glad was king sagriva's breast and all his lords their joy confessed steered by sure hope of rama's aid and promise which the prince had made Canto eight, Rama's promise. Doubt from Sugriva's heart had fled, and thus to Raghu's son he said, "No 
no bliss the gods of heaven deny each views me with a favouring eye when thou whom all good gifts attend hast sought me and become my friend leagued friend with thee in bold emprise my arm might win the conquered skies and shall our banded strength be weak to gain the realm which now i seek a happy fate was mine above my kith and kin and all i love when near the witness fire i won thy friendship raku's glorious son thou too in ripening time shall see thy friend not all unworthy thee what gifts i have shall thus be shown not mine the tongue to make them known Strong is the changeless bond that binds the friendly fate of noble minds in war, in danger, farm and sure, their constancy and love and tear, gold, silver, jewels, rich and rare, they count as wealth for friends to share. Yea, be they rich or poor and low, blessed with all joys or sunk in war, stained with each fault or pure or blame their friends the nearest place may claim for whom they leave at friendship's call their gold their bliss their homes and all he spoke by generous impulse moved and Regu's son his speech approved glancing at lakshman by his side like indra in his beauty's pride the banner monarch saw the pair of mighty brothers standing there and turned his rapid eye to view the forest trees that near him grew. He saw, not far from where he stood, a sultry towering over the wood, amid the thick leaves many a bee graced the scant blossom of the tree, from whose dark shade a bough that bore a load of leafy twigs he tore, which on the grassy ground he laid, and seats for him and Rama made. Hanuman saw them sit, he sought, a sultry's leafy bough and brought, the burden with meek request, and treated Lakshman too to rest. There on the noble mountain's brow, strewn with the young leaves of the bough, sat Ragu's son in placid ease, calm as the sea when sleeps the breeze. Sugriva's heart with rapture swelled, and thus by eager love impelled, he spoke in gracious tone that oft checked by his joy was low and soft i by my brother's might oppressed by ceaseless war and fear distressed mourning my concert far away on rishyamukha's mountains tray expelled by bali's cruel hate i went the here disconsolate do thou to whom all sufferers flee from his dread hand deliver me he spoke and rama just and brave whose pious soul to virtue clave smiled as in conscious might he eyed the king of banners and replied best fruit of friendship is the deed that helps the friend in hour of need and this mine arm in that shall lay thy robber ere the close of day for see these feeder dots of mine whose points so fiercely flash and shine and shafts with golden emblem came from dark woods known by skanda's name winged from the pinion of the horn like indra's bolts they strike and burn with even knots and piercing head each like a furious snake is sped with these the day before thine eye shall like a shattered mountain lie bali the dread and wicked foe, overwhelmed in hideous overthrow. He spoke, Zagriva's bosom swelled, with hope and joy unparalleled. Then his glad voice the banner raised, and thus the son of Reko praised. Long have I pined in depth of grief, thou art the hope of all, O chief. Now, Reko's son, I hail thee, friend, and bid thee to my walls attend. For by my truth I swear it, now, Not life itself is dear as thou, Since by the witness fire we met, And friendly hand in hand was set. 
friend communes now with friend, and hence I tell with surest confidence what woes that on my spirit weigh consume me through the night and day. For sobs and sighs his cause could speak, and his sad voice came low and weak, as, while his eyes with tears overflowed, the burden of his soul he showed. Then, by strong effort, bravely made, the torrent of his tears he stayed, wiped his broad eyes, his grief subdued, and thus more calm his speech renewed. By Bali's conquering might oppressed, of power and kingship dispossessed, loaded with taunts of scorn and hate, I left my realm and royal state. He tore away my consort, she, was dearer than my life to me, and many a friend to me and mine, in hopeless chains, was doomed to pine. With wicked thoughts, unsated still, me, whom he wrongs, he yearns to kill, and spies upon a race who tried to slay me by this hand have died. Moved by this constant doubt and fear, I saw thee, prince, and came not near, when woe and peril gather round, a foe in every form is found. Save Hanuman, O Raghu's son, and these, no friends is left me, none. Through their kind aid, a faithful band, who guard their lord from hostile hand, rest when their chieftain rests, and bend their steps wherever he lists to wend. Through them alone, in toil and pain, my wretched life I still sustain. Enough, for thou hast heard in brief The story of my pain and grief. His mighty strength all regions know, My brother, but my deadly foe. Ah, if the proud oppressor fell, His death would all my war dispel. Yea, on my cruel conqueror's fall, My joy depends, my life, my all. This were the end and sure relief, O Rama, of my tale of grief, Fair be his lot, or dark with war, No comfort like a friend I know. Then Rama spoke, O friend, relate, When sprang fraternal strife and hate, That duly taught by thee I may Each foreman's strength and weakness weigh, And skilled in every chance restore The blissful state thou hadst before. For when I think of all the scorn, and beat a war thou long hast borne, My soul indignant swells with pain, Like waters flushed with furious rain. Then, ere I string this banded bow, Tell me the tale I long to know, Ere from the cord my arrow fly, And low in death thy foemen lie. He spoke, so grieve a joy to hear, Nor less his lords were glad of cheer, and thus the Rama mighty sold, The cause that moved their strife he told. Canto nine, Sigriva's story My brother, known by Bali's name, Had won by might a conqueror's fame. My father's eldest born was he, Well honoured by his sire and me. My father died, and each shade's lord, Named Bali king with one accord, and he, by right of birth ordained, The sovereign of the banners reigned. He in his royal place controlled The kingdom of our sires of old, And I all faithful service lent To aid my brother's government. The fiend Maya be him of yore, To Dundavi his mother bore, For woman's love in strife engaged, A deadly war with Bali waged. When sleep had chained each weary frame, To vast Giskinda gates he came, And shouting through the shadows of night, Challenged his foreman to the fight. My brother heard the furious shout, And while with rage rushed madly out, Though fain would I and each sad wife Detain him from the deadly strife, He bound his demon foe to slay, And rushed impetuous to the fray. His weeping wives he thrust aside, And fought impelled by fury hide, While by my love and duty led, I followed where my brother sped. 
Maya be looked, and at the sight, fled from his foes in wild affright. The flying fiend we quickly viewed, and with swift feet his steps pursued. Then rose the moon, whose friendly ray cast light upon our headlong way. By the soft beams was dimly shown a mighty cave with grass overgrown. Within its depths he sprang, and we, the demon's form, no more might see. My brother's breast was all aglow with fury when he missed the foe. And turning thus to me, he said, with senses all disquieted, Here by the cavern's mouth remain, keep ear and eye upon the strain, while I the dark recess explore, and deep my brand in foeman's gore. I heard his angry speech and tried to turn him from his plan aside. He made me swear by both his feet, and sped within the dark retreat. While in the cave he stayed, and I watched at the mouth a year went by. For his return I looked in vain, and, moved by love, believed him slain. I mourned, by doubt and fear distressed, and greater horror seized my breast. When from the cavern rolled a flood, a corner stream of froth and blood, and from the depths a sound of fear, the roar of demons smote mine ear. But never rang my brother's shout, triumphant in the battle rout. I closed the cavern with a block, hills as a hill of shattered rock, gave offerings dear to Bali's shade, and sought Kiskinda, saw this maid. Long time with anxious care I tried, from Bali's lords his fate to hide, but they, when once the tale was known, placed me as king on Bali's throne. There for a while I justly reigned, and all with equal care ordained. When joyous from the demon slain, my brother Bali came again. He found me ruling in his stead, and fired at rage. His eyes grew red. He slew the lords who made me king, and spoke keen words to taunt and sting. The kingly rank and power I held, my brother's rage with ease had quelled, but still restrained by old respect, for claims abroad the thought I checked. Thus having struck the demon down, came Bali to his royal town. With meek respect, with humble speech, his hofty heart I strove to reach. But all my arts were tried in vain, no gentle word his lips would deign. Though to the ground I bent and set, his feet upon my coronet, still Bali in his rage and pride, all signs of grace and love denied. End of Cantos 7, 8, and 9